Craig Stover, and uh, welcome to Jonathan Eckel Studio. You've been gracious enough to uh, invite me here today uh, to talk to you about your work. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Um, how long have you been making artwork? Uh, I mean, I always I always drew as a kid. Um, ever since I was young, I kind of remember being in elementary school, and I, I remember drawing sharks and ninjas and things like that. And they'd always be like, you know, some kind of action going on under the water. And kids would like that, and they would encourage me to do it. And I remember kids like kind of sitting around me, and I would draw for them. But um, I would I would say I never was you know I never really thought of myself as an artist or anything, and mm. I didn't think I was particularly good. I just liked to do it. But um, in high school, when I was in probably tenth grade, I had two teachers, and they both were very influential mm. on having me take it more seriously. You know, um, and so I guess since then, yeah. since then. Uh, the ideas that you first started, I assume they've, they've changed over time. Where, where do your ideas come from for the works that you do? Well, yeah, like you said, they change uh, over time, so it's always different. Mm -hmm. um, there's also some things that maybe never change and, and things I go back to. Mm -hmm. So um, if we're sticking with, with kind of high school and some of the first painting I did and, and starting to take art more seriously, uh, the Bay Area figurative artists mm -hmm. uh, was very... I was very influenced by by all of them, um, especially Richard Diebenkorn. Mm. And so I remember just some of my first attempts at art making were in that vein and, mm -hmm. and in that style and trying to, you know, taking my own photographs. So maybe it was my brother playing guitar with a friend, mm. um, but using their style in a way or trying to, to find, um, find a language. Mm. Well, so you mentioned Bay Area figurative painters. Uh, which I can see a little bit of that in your work, especially the earlier work, I yeah. think. So, you know, I've, obviously you're, those artists had an influence on your work. Are there other artists that you're currently looking at that you think uh, are making an impact or sticking in your brain? Yeah. Uh, luckily, I, I work at an art gallery, so I, I have access to, to looking at new artists and older artists and um, just being in touch with art every day. Hmm. So I'm kind of seeing new things through that experience, through working there, and I bring that into my own work. Um, I, I kind of lately have been looking at a lot of like WPA hmm. um, artists from that era, the th 30s, 40s, and um, kind of early abstraction. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm most interested in now. And for my own work, that's it's gotten me to kind of strip things down. Hmm. Instead of putting everything into the painting, I'm trying to now make something that's really strong with maybe five elements or something. So over time, your work has evolved. I mean, I can, I can see it. And mm -hmm. uh, do you consider it like a slow evolution or was there possibly a big painting or an event or something that, that you did or saw that, that really flipped the light switch on that made you do a, a change in your work or something? Um, I don't know if... Like when, when you ask me that question, I, I think of like, I had this experience of like, oh, did I go and see a painting and I just like, the, you know, the, mm -hmm. the choir came in and everything like lined up and I realized. The movies. <laughs> right. Um, so no, I wasn't that lucky, but, right. but no, uh, but I think I've had many experiences in my life that have defined me as a person and then also as an artist. So um, even as, as late as when I was 20 and I spent a year in, at college uh, in Rome, Mm -hmm. Like that experience, I think, you know, I mean, I already was kind of pretty, pretty sure of myself as wanting to be an artist, mm -hmm. but kind of after that, I'd say it was like, you know, it was etched into the stone, it mm -hmm. was, it was defined. The die was set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I wasn't going to go back on it. It right. was, it was my mission. Well, you've, you've clearly had uh, lots of different series and pieces that you've done over your time. And, I'm curious, of course, what most people are is about the new work. What, what are you currently working on? Um, well, we're sitting in front of what I'm currently working on, but um, I, I, for the last two years, have been working strictly on paper mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to oil on canvas. And um, I've been using acrylic and water-based uh, mediums on paper. And then these are actually charcoal. They're, they're just begun, so um, they'll change a lot. but. I'm trying to, like I said, kind of instead of maybe putting everything into the painting, which I, I've done for a long time, I've really made kind of uh, intense imagery. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to maybe get it get it stripped down now to mm -hmm. like really important, you know, the really important elements mm -hmm. and uh, simplify it, yet still have it be very dynamic and it still needs to have this, 
energy in it. That's mm. what I tend to enjoy. But you, you mentioned something earlier to me about dropping color and then yeah. just sort of focusing on the black and whites, which I think you have two starters of drawings behind us. Yeah. And so do you do you plan on continuing that or do you use that do you use that as a device or is that uh, an end in itself? Uh, I'm sorry, use what as a device? Uh, uh, just dropping the color, just so you can focus on the, the form itself. Is that? Yeah. Um, well, we were we were discussing this a little earlier, but um, I'll do something like that after I've worked in a certain way for a while. Mm. Um, so I kind of just made a bunch of paintings that were pretty energetic and very colorful. Um, maybe for the last nine months, mm. year, and when I'm kind of done with that, then I do something like stripping it down to black and white as a way to get back to the fundamentals and mm. try to try to go in a different direction than where I was. Well, speaking of, of the fundamentals, you were talking about uh, uh, earlier today about the, the materials that you're actually using. And so we, right behind us, we have what look like to be charcoal drawings. Yeah, um, fine so, charcoal. So, and I, and I believe that you've used charcoal quite a bit over the years. So, what is it about the materials that you do use? You use a, a, a lot of water-based inks and, and yeah, charcoals and mostly pastels. acrylic, uh, and then when I'm drawing, charcoal, pencil, and pastel. What is it about those materials that makes you want to use them? Um, you know, it's, I don't know, it's different things. I, I think one thing is laziness. I, <laughs> I, I feel like uh, oil painting is, is, a, is a bit of a commitment, mm -hmm. um, and I'm set up to do it, but uh, with with the acrylic paints, I can I can I can work a lot quicker. Also, mm -hmm. um, with oil, there there it, it's drying, and you know the cleanup time is an hour and all that. With mm -hmm. with acrylic, I can I can actually knock out a painting and make some big decisions early on mm -hmm. that you couldn't do because the paint would be wet if mm -hmm. you were using oil paint. Mm -hmm. So it dries quick enough that you know I can really hash out stuff and mm -hmm. and get you know. So I guess yeah, I've actually painted a lot more. Um, the last few years than I did maybe before. Well, it looks like you to me that you have like a a love affair with uh, the materials that you use, the shapes that uh, pop up in your pictures, and uh, to me they look like pictures uh, made by an artist who actually has a love of the craft and, and love of artwork. And you, you can't help but notice all the art that is in any any artist studio when you walk in. This one is no exception. And I notice you have your work in here. You also have work of others. Uh, a lot of artists collect artwork themselves. And I know that you said you started your own collection. Yeah. So uh, I guess my big question here is uh, if you could own any one piece of art, anything, and uh, you know you had the pocket change to do it, is there anything that would stick out in your mind about kind of, a, oh, I'll have that? <laughs> <laughs> huh. Um... I don't know. Every time you ask me this question, it's it's a tough it's a tough thing because I change my mind a lot about kind of what I would own and mm -hmm. and maybe even sometimes if it's right to own hmm. um, and borrow extended lease. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's no qualms. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, it's really hard. I... You had mentioned that you just came from the Matisse Demon Corn show. Yeah. I mean. I, at that show, there was there was about five demon corns per Matisse, mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of walked away being like, you know, demon corn stole the show, and I really I really thought I would I would I would choose something like that, but then then the clarity came because I realized you only need one Matisse <laughs> for every five <laughs> demon corns. So I don't know. I I, it's an interesting question because some artists they'll answer it right away, like oh Van Gogh's ring, but then there's others that. Yeah. Well, there's like six or seven that I, I've narrowed it down to. Yeah, so. well, there's much more than six or seven. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So any of those, I assume that they, uh, those ideas within the pictures that you might want might already appear in your own pictures or they might influence you in some way? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm influenced by all the artists I look at. At the same time, at some point in my life, I made the decision to, like, maybe not look as mm -hmm. much, you know. Um, I... I I feel like I, I've been after a personal style that is influenced by some of these artists I've listed, but um, is has become or is becoming my own. Mm -hmm. And I think 
you know, I think it's good to embrace community and embrace uh, other similar people that think the same way you do and might advance your art by um, talking and discussing things. I also think it's really good to maybe turn your back and, mm -hmm. and um, even hide away or do whatever you have to do to, mm -hmm. to, to forget things mm -hmm. and make something new. Mm -hmm. So as much as I'm influenced, I also feel like I've taken time to not look at things mm -hmm. and, and really just try to like think about what I care about because mm -hmm. that's all that matters to me. Well, speaking of making new, what's next for you? What's next for artist Jonathan? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I got a few exciting things where I'm going to travel, so, mm -hmm. so that'll be fun. Um, traveling, to me, is uh, a way to get fresh ideas mm -hmm. and see new things. It's always good. So those experiences will be coming up. I'm looking forward to that. And, um, and one of those experiences will be uh, actually a residency, so I'll mm -hmm. be painting for nice. maybe a month and a half, two months even, and um, I'm hoping that that experience will, you know, change my work again. Um, and will these pictures be done by then? Yeah, these pictures will be done before I go. Okay, so I could come back and we could get an update on them. I'd love to show well, them. Well, that sounds great. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to talk with me today. Sure thing. And I want to thank you for tuning in. Thank Appreciate you. It.